for completeness sake, I'm going to be uploading a bunch of OMM videos to kind of round out this section of my channel. So in this video, we'll be talking about spinal range of motion. So for spinal range of motion, it's actually kind of simple. You just want to break it down into the cervical spine, the thoracic spine, and the lumbar spine. And then for each spinal segment, you just need to know the degrees of motion that you can get in the various positions, including flexion, extension, rotation, and side bending. So let's just kind of rapidly run through this. I'll explain as we go. I'll try to point out what spinal segment you're monitoring. And then at the very end, I'll give you a cool mnemonic to remember all of the important information from this chart. So for the cervical spine, both flexion and extension can go from 45 to 90 degrees. So when you have a patient in front of you, you want to put your fingers on the C7 T1 inner space and instructing the patient to actively move forward and flex forward and then extend backwards will open up that joint space between C7 and T1. And you're approximating the range of motion within that space and then applying that to the entire cervical spine. Remember that active motion, the patient acts alone, A active, A alone. And in passive motion, the physician moves the patient, P passive, P physician. So for cervical flexion and extension, it's 45 to 90 degrees. For cervical rotation, it's 70 to 90 degrees. So again, you're gonna have your fingers in that C7, T1 area, but this time you'll be monitoring the transverse processes and that you're going to have the patient rotate their neck or their head to the right or the left and you're going to approximate what is the degree or what is the range of motion at that c7 t1 transverse process and then you would be applying that to the entire cervical spine for side bending the cervical spine can do 30 to 45 degrees and for side bending you're just going to have the patient bend their neck to the right or the left. And again, there's an active component, there can be a passive component, but you're assessing at the C7 T1 transverse processes, what's happening in that joint space, and then you're applying that to the rest of the cervical spine. Now thoracic is a lot more straightforward, so I'm just gonna fill it all in and then we'll talk about it. Thoracic flexion is 45 degrees, thoracic extension can not extend, zero degrees. Thoracic rotation, a little confusing, but not so bad. The top portion of the cervical spine cannot rotate, but the bottommost portion of the thoracic spine down from about T9 and under can actually go 90 degrees. And then for si side bending, it's just 45 degrees. So the important thing here to note is that if you take a look at the thoracic spine, the uppermost segments of the thoracic spine are encumbered by the ribs. And because the ribs are there and attaching at the back of these thoracic vertebrae, it really limits the range of motion of the thoracic vertebrae. So when we look at something like thoracic rotation, and I wrote that the top cannot rotate, so it's zero, but the bottom can actually rotate up to 90 degrees. That's because if you look at the bottom most thoracic vertebrae, they are not encumbered by those giant ribs. And so that's why they have a freer range of motion. So let's move into lumbar now. So lumbar flexion and extension. Lumbar flexion is 60 to 90 degrees and lumbar extension is 30 to 45 degrees. And at first glance, you might be like, how are these so drastically different? But if you imagine somebody's lumbar spine, try to have them in your head or you can even do it at your desk, stand up and flex your lumbar spine forward and then stand backwards and try to extend your lumbar spine. And what you'll notice is that extension you hardly get anywhere. In fact, if you are out of shape, you might feel really lousy when you try this. Um, but lumbar flexion, there's really a, a pretty big degree of motion up to 90 degrees when you bend forward. So this should make a little bit of sense as to why lumbar extension is significantly less than lumbar flexion. Rotation's easy, the lumbar spine doesn't rotate and side bending is only 25 degrees. And if this shows up on your in-class exams or on Comlex, it's gonna be this cute little hip drop test. Basically the patient would be standing there and you would be watching them passively from a distance and you would tell them to quickly buckle one of their knees and kind of like flex their knee. And when they do that, the hip will drop on one side, which is a very quick way of side bending the lumbar spine. 
And when they do this, there's this little buckle in their knee, which causes a little bit of teeny side bending of the lumbar spine up to 25 degrees. And you're supposed to somehow measure that and discern or deduce how much lumbar side bending is going on. So this is a pretty imperfect way to do this, but this is how this gets tested, um, especially in in-class practicals, you're gonna have to do this. So you wanna know that hip drop test. So here's our, our summary chart. And what you've noticed is I've highlighted some of these boxes orange. And what I'm trying to illustrate here is that rotation is the most range, has the, the greatest range of motion for cervical and for those bottom thoracic segments. And then in the lumbar spine, the motion with the greatest range of motion is actually flexion. And you wanna memorize this, right? Because it's not so high yield to know every single range of motion unless you're actually doing an in-class practical in your OMT lab. But more importantly, if you're gonna apply this to complex principles, you wanna know which motion has the greatest range of motion or which segment within each segment, so within cervical, which of these four motions has the greatest range of motion. So for that reason, you need to know rotation for cervical and thoracic and flexion for lumbar. So the mnemonic that you could use to memorize that if you need some assistance is one, two, row and flexing bars. So one, two, row, the one refers to the first spinal segment, so that's cervical. Two refers to the second spinal area and that's thoracic. And then row means rotate. So just like you might hear on a rowing team, one, two, row, one, two, row, cervical thoracic rotation so that tells you that in the first and second segments rotation has the greatest range of motion and then lumbar the greatest range of motion was flexion so flexing bars um, as an avid listener of rap music i always think about my favorite rapper flexing on the bars on the song so flexing bars just kind of makes sense as far as the mnemonic goes but this is your summary table this is range of motion